Hey yo, it's Liara. Welcome back to my Techtopia startup guide. This time I'll be covering how to start a village, including how to get the town hall and storage markers you'll need to begin, what counts as a building, what to do with your first few villagers, and how to protect your village in the early days. I already covered how to install Techtopia in a previous video. If you still need to take care of that, you'll find the link in the iCards. Got that covered? Awesome. Now you've got Techtopia installed, so it's time to start playing. First up, how do you want to start your village? No matter what, you're going to need a town hall marker, but you can get those in a few different ways. The easiest way is just to steal one from an existing village, either by taking over the village or by grabbing the town hall storage and any other tokens you want to begin with and taking them elsewhere to begin anew. But you can also make your own town hall marker by crafting together a set of iron tools and a single diamond. This does mean you'll be digging for a while before you even begin your village, but it's not a bad idea to have a supply of torches and food first anyway. Of course, you can also just use creative mode or the slash give command to get yourself a town hall marker. This is by far the fastest way, so if you'd rather just jump right in, that's fine too. Note that if you're lucky enough to be playing Tiktopia on a server, they may have rules about how you can get your tokens, or maybe giving them out somehow, such as a box that spawn. Always be sure to check your specific server's rules. Be sure to consider the location of your town hall carefully. While you can move it later, it can be a hassle, especially if you're wanting to move entire biomes instead of just to the next building over. Your village will extend in 120 blocks in each direction around the village. So ideally, you want to place the town hall somewhere that maximizes the usable space for your village. Once you know where you're placing it, you'll want to make a valid structure. This can be a grand building or a simple shack. The only rules are that it has to be a covered flat floor of at least six, but no more than 500 tiles and a door. Technically, this is a valid structure. So if I put down an item frame beside or above the door and put the town hall token on it, it'll activate. There'll be time to worry about making it pretty later. See that enchanted shimmer? That means the token's activated. I've created a valid structure and the game's detected that this is indeed the thing I put a token on it to make it a town hall in this case. After a few seconds, our first villagers will spawn. These are the guys I like to call the NPCs, the architect and the tradesman. Unlike other villagers who need food and beds and will do jobs around your village, these two stay here forever. They sell all the other tokens and markers you'll need to build up your village. If you're using a fresh town hall marker, the one that you either crafted or that was spawned in, a few seconds later, a chest will also appear in your new town hall. This contains a few things to get you going. Markers for storage in a small home building and tokens to convert your first couple of citizens. Note that this chest only spawns the first time a particular town hall marker is placed. You can't keep removing and replacing it to get more. And markers that were already in use, such as in a naturally generated village, won't get this box either. It's also important to note that building markers only work in the village they're from. That means that the storage and home token will only work within this village's limits. That's why, if you're going to take over a naturally generated village, it's important that you make sure it has a storage token already. And if you're going to just take the markers from one, you want to make sure you take at least the storage along with any other markers you want. You will still be able to buy other tokens from the NPC villagers, but storage tokens are irreplaceable. This also means that if you want to expand your village, you can't just go pillage the tokens from your neighbor. They won't work back home. So I've got your first two markers, now what? Two things, building and recruiting. You'll want to go ahead and make buildings for your storage and home markers as soon as possible so that your villagers have places to work out of and sleep in. Keep in mind that in addition to the basic requirements of a door, a roof, and between six and 500 flat tiles that most structures share, some buildings have specific things they need in them to fulfill their purposes. 
some will be obvious. You need storage in the storage room, and it's preferable to have beds in the home. But some things may not be so clear. For example, your storage room should also have a furnace and a crafting table to help villagers make the basic things they need. And adding chairs to a home can increase your villagers' opportunities for happiness. While your town hall is the literal center of your village, the storage is the functional center. Many of your villagers will stop by it every day, maybe even multiple times a day, whether it's to deliver the supplies they've harvested, make themselves a new axe, or just to get food. Therefore, you'll want to pick a spot that's reasonably central to where you plan all the work areas to be. Your first home token, on the other hand, you don't have to be quite so mindful of the location of. Just keep in mind that your villagers will have to walk there and back every day, so closer is still better, and you may want to make sure the area is lit up so your citizens don't wind up tasty treats on the way home at night. Also keep in mind that this first home marker you got is labeled as a home too. That means it can house up to two villagers. Checking the architect reveals a home four and home six as well. These will let you mix and match the number of villagers you put in each house. Now it's on to recruiting citizens. If you chose to take over an existing village, congratulations! You've probably already got quite a few villagers around, already hard at work. This is a great jump start to the game. Though you may find yourself with other challenges in terms of keeping everyone safe and fed because you've already started with a developed village. I'll cover more details about that in a later video. For right now, we'll focus on the process in a village that starts with no citizens. Every day, the game will spawn a merchant and potentially a group of nomads to come visit your village. The math is a bit complicated, but suffice it to say the bigger your village, the smaller the chances you'll get nomads. But the first few days, you should definitely see some. Here they come now! So right now we have the two tokens the Town Hall gifted us to use to convert some of these nomads into citizens of our tiny village. These tokens are a farmer and a lumberjack, two professions you'll likely have many of in your city later. These professions are unique from most any other in that they don't need a specific building to do their job in. Farmers will farm from anywhere there's tiled land, and lumberjacks will cut down most any tree they can pathfind to. So we've got our nomads here. Time to decide who's getting recruited for what job. If we click on them, an interface will pop up with each nomad's stats and skills. This way you can see the skills, if any, these wanderers have brought to your town. For example, this one has 21 levels in Butcher, while this one has 4 levels in Cleric. If you're lucky, you'll get nomads who have the skills you're looking for right off the bat. Keep in mind, though, that most nomads will roll into town with only a few points of skills, so it'll only take a few days for someone with no skills at all to catch up. We'll pick one of these nomads to be our first farmer, and another to be the first lumberjack. All we have to do is right-click on them with the tokens. There we go. The lumberjack is off immediately to start working, heading for a nearby tree. The farmer needs us to do a little prep work for them, though. We'll go ahead and till a few tiles of farmland that should keep them busy for right now. And of course, so far all I have is regular seeds from knocking out grass, but as time goes on, I might get a hold of other crops to plant too. So other than making the buildings pretty, what else is there to do all day while your villagers work? Why planning what your next villagers will be for starters? Early on like this, you may want to focus on just more farmers and lumberjacks, or maybe a chef to cook for them. And of course, enough home space for all of them. Remember, any villager type you have, the merchant will also be looking to buy things from, whether you have those items or not. And that can mean items you do want to sell not being available as trades every day anymore. So it's best to keep the number of types of villagers down until you're a bit ahead of the game emerald-wise. You can also consider miners or ranchers to help your village grow in the early days, as well as to help you with collection of things you might need, like iron for tools or wool for beds. You'll also want to make sure you're keeping your villagers stocked with tools and food. Delete most types of food if you put it in the storage chest for them. Though if you want something a little nicer and are willing to sacrifice a few emeralds, the merchant may have some good food to buy. 
Before you know it, your villagers will have produced supplies you can then sell to the merchant for emeralds. These emeralds will then let you get more tokens and markers from the tradesman and architect. Keep in mind, you can only sell items villagers have produced. You'll be able to spot them because their names are green instead of white. So the more villagers you have producing things for you, the quicker you'll have enough to sell. But that's also more villagers to keep fed, housed, and protected. Speaking of protection, guards are a worthwhile investment early on too. You may have noticed a building type called the barracks. Unlike all the other job specific buildings, guards don't need the barracks or even a guard post to do their job. Without them, they'll just patrol the village randomly until they either see a zombie or hear another villager getting hurt, at which point they'll run to the rescue. They're great to have if you find yourself not able to keep up with killing mobs that spawn near your village. Keep in mind though, they only attack mobs which actively hunt villagers, like zombies and husks. So you're on your own with creepers. There's one other threat to your village to be concerned about too. Necromancers are high level enemies that can spawn in your village, taking control of monsters and animals and attacking your villagers. If you plan to fight one someday, you'll want to get guards trained up as soon as possible. But if you'd rather just never face a necromancer, you can just rotate your town hall marker. Any direction but straight up tells the game that nope, you're not interested and eliminates any chance of one spawning. It's a little like turning disasters on and off in SimCity. So don't feel bad about not wanting to risk the lives of your villagers. It's easy to get attached. Of course, if you're not happy with how your village is going, Anyway, that should be enough to get you started. I've definitely still only scratched the surface of Tango Tech's amazing mod. There are nearly two dozen types of villagers and a huge variety of structures to go with them and make your town really come alive. In the coming weeks, I'll be posting videos that go more in depth in the specific mechanics of how your village works. But again, I'm just a normal player of the game like the rest of you, and these guides are just my way to show my appreciation for Tectopia and hopefully encourage others to play as well. So if you have questions I haven't answered, I definitely encourage you to head over to Tango's developer playthrough series and take a look. Or, of course, check the wiki. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with me today. If you've enjoyed this guide, please leave a like. If you'd like to stay tuned for future episodes of this or to see my Tectopia or Vanilla SMP Let's Play series, Please subscribe while you're here. Thanks for watching. Bye.